This is the pinnacle of sheep hunting. I've spent the last 15 years building Monarch Taxidermy to what it is and with the specialty of catering to the international hunter. If your hunting takes you to the game rich locales of Africa or hunting deer, elk, and antelope of the American West, maybe chasing red stags in New Zealand or Argentina. Or are you interested in hunting bears, goats, and moose of Alaska? Do you like to hunt exotics in Texas? Or maybe you're interested in chasing the world's over 80 subspecies of sheep and goats. Monarch has the experience to handle your project.
great and I'll always shoot some grizzly stick arrows. We are about to start our uh, second journey on driving up to the hot springs camp. We drove about 13 hours yesterday and uh, here we are in uh, a little village. Last leg till we get to sheep camp and then from there it's game on. Well, as you can see in the video, my shot was a little far forward and the ram ran over the ridge. Uh, me and my guide started making our way up to where I hit the ram and we last seen him. But shortly after, the guide said we probably need to turn around. It's getting really late and we're not going to make it to the top of this before dark. So we backed out, got to the Jeep, the Bigfoot, and head back to camp. And the next morning we got up and we're on our way back to look for the ram. We started about 13,000 feet and within an hour, hour and a half, we were just under 16,000 feet. Uh, it was really cold, it was below zero. The wind was howling. We were on blood 90% of the time until we got to the back side of the ridge where the wind was just howling and blowing the snow everywhere. There was no tracks, no blood, but we just continued hoping maybe we'd glass the ram up. Unfortunately, we didn't find the ram that day and we went back to camp without a sheep. The next morning we woke up with plans to go and continue our search. But after not even getting to breakfast, on my way to the breakfast table, I threw up three times <laughs> and was having vomiting and diarrhea all morning. Couldn't keep anything down. So the guides, Shorty and Audubec, said, hey, you stay in bed and rest. You could have high altitude sickness. We'll go look for your ram. 
So that day they went out and they were looking for my ram. A little bit later in the afternoon, I started feeling a little bit better, and my dad and his guide convinced me to go on a drive with them. But that didn't last very long. About 30 minutes into it, uh, I got sick again, and back to camp I went. As it was getting dark and everyone was coming back, Zafar, the main guy of the camp, and my dad's guide came into the little cabin that I was in and said, Hey, you need to come look at something. So I put my slippers on, my down pants, my down jacket, and wandered outside to find Shodi and Audubek standing by the Bigfoot with my ram laying in the back. They said they found the ram early in the morning, but they couldn't get to him with the, the Bigfoot because the snow was so deep, and they had to do a big hike around because it was so open. Uh, they thought he was dead when they first found him, but as they got closer, within 100 yards, they realized he was still alive, but he couldn't move at all. So they ended up walking right up onto him, and Shorty was able to put one final shot into him. It sucked not being able to go get my ram with the guys, but for any of you guys that know about high altitude sickness or have ever had high altitude sickness, you know it's life-threatening and people die from it. People have actually died at that camp from high altitude sickness. Even if I didn't have high altitude sickness, I didn't want to chance it. Uh, I had all the symptoms besides fluid in my lungs, uh, puking, vomiting, all that. It was rough. I was super weak, couldn't do much, couldn't even ride around the vehicle, so it was hard. Luckily, I took some Gatorade packets with me, and during the day, I just drank a bunch of tea and Gatorade, tried to eat some bread, and I got better after just a few days.